If you have a server or somewhere you log into remotely, you're probably familiar with the following situation. You log into your server, you open the authentication logs, and you discover that some dude has been trying to log into your server with default credentials for like thousand times. And sure, if you have a strong password and a public key authentication setup, these attempts are pretty harmless. But still, it's kind of annoying to know that someone is constantly trying to break into your server and look at your stuff, I don't know. So today I'll show you a very fun way to protect your server from these kind of attacks, to mess with the hackers and hopefully waste their time. So the way hackers usually try to get access to your server is essentially brute force. They would usually have a list of some popular login and password pairs, and they'll be trying them on your server using a automated script. And since by default SSH doesn't have any kind of captcha or a mechanism that will kick the attacker out after unsuccessful attempts, it's very easy to automate and doesn't require any kind of manual intervention. So the attacker can just launch their script and go on with their life while the script is doing the dirty work. However, the SSH specifications include a thing called banner, which is basically a text that is displayed to everyone who tries to log into the server, and there's no limit on how long it can be and how much time it can take to display. You see what I'm getting at? A guy by the name of Chris Wellens took this idea and developed a piece of software that he called Endless SSH. The way it works is basically you put your real SSH server on a different port, say 69, and then you run Endless SSH on the port 22, and it pretends to be a SSH server. But every time somebody tries to log into it, they're basically forced to read a very, very, very long text message forever. It will never time out, it will never throw an error or anything, and it will basically keep displaying gibberish until stopped manually. And since most of those attacks are automated, it can take a really, really long time until somebody notices that something went wrong. And yes, there are a lot of normal and boring ways to protect your server, such as IP tables or fail to ban, but with endless SSH, you're not just protecting your server from the attackers, you also waste their precious time, which could be otherwise spent on attacking other servers. And if the thought of some 12-year-old script kitty with an anonymous mask, whose lead hacks or script got stuck at one server for a whole month, being pissed off about this whole thing, doesn't sell you on the idea, hell, I don't know what will. <laughs> so let me show you real quick how to install and set up endless SSH on your computer. First thing you want to do is clone the GitHub repository using the command git clone. Then you need to change to the uh, endless SSH directory and compile the binary by typing make. Also a quick note, if you're in Debian or Ubuntu, you might get an error while compiling the binary. So in this case, what you need to do is to install the package called libc6-dev. Then you need to move the binary into the folder in your path. In my case, I'm gonna move it to usr local bin. And then let's just verify real quick that it's there. And after that, let's just copy the systemd service file into etc systemd system. Now we need to enable the systemd service by typing sudo systemctl enable endless ssh. And then pretty much the last thing that we need to do is to create the configuration file. Let's first create the folder in etc endless ssh and then let's create a text file called config. Here we only need to specify one option really and that is the port because by default endless ssh runs on port 2222 and we want it to run on the port 22 obviously. Let's save the file and quit. Now we're ready to start endless SSH. So let's type sudo systemctl start endless SSH. And just to be sure, let's verify that it's actually running on the port 22 by typing netstat-tulpn. And as you can see, it's here running on the port 22, so we're all good. So now let's open a new terminal window and try to SSH into our server. As you can see, if I specify the port 69, the port on which my actual SSH server is running, it's all good and fine, it's logging in, it's, you know, no problem. But if I set the port 22, nothing's happening really. So let me just show you what's going on under the hood by specifying the verbose option. And as you can see, the endless SSH just keeps showing our client those weird random lines in the banner. And this footage is actually sped up because in reality, every line takes like 30 seconds to show. And as I already said, the client doesn't really treat this banner thingy as a part of handshake, so there will be no timeout, no nothing. The script that the hackers will be using will just be stuck on this stage forever. And wasting the time of someone who would otherwise spend it on doing some nasty stuff is always good. So yeah. So that's gonna be it for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as usual, I would like to thank my patrons, Devin Merrill, Mitchell Valentino, Ray Piria, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.